trigger punching will eventually catch up to you. Anxiety and depression. Anxiety, because you want to get rid of that arrow. You need to get rid of that arrow. Depression, you got rid of that arrow and you missed. That was the story of my first 10 years of elk hunting. Come along guys, I used to punch the trigger. I wanna tell you how I've taken steps to mitigate that. Here we go. Set these hills on fire. Set these hills on fire. The reason why I'm making this video this time of year is because, you know, fall is getting closer and it's time to leave the backyard head to the hills, head to the mountains, head to the stand and see what you got. Has your practice actually paid off? And you know, we can sit here and argue about target panic and punching a trigger. And I know plenty of really good archers that hammer a trigger. They shoot a non-surprise release. They, they command shoot. They know when the release is going off. Here's what I used to do. I would have an elk come in, probably bugling. I would pull my bow back and the second my pen was anywhere on their vitals, broadside, quarter and away, whatever, I would punch the trigger right away. And this worked for me. I did this in practice. I did this on animals and it worked pretty good. And I had some pretty good success. Now where it would catch up to me is the seasonality involved with punching a trigger. You're gonna have days, weeks, maybe even months where you can't group for crap, where the target panics finally set in and you actually start doing timing mechanisms where you pull back, you see the target, you get the pin above it and you lower the pin down. And once the pin crosses the line of where you wanna shoot, you let her eat, you pop that trigger. Or some guys go below the animal and they raise up and once that pin hits right where they want, it's gone. I'm here to tell you, for the long term, for sustainability, for trajectory, you probably ought to consider or at least take a look at mitigating this form of target panic by switching over to a controlled shot process, by switching over to a surprise release. Now, I'm not an archery coach, probably should have said that in the beginning, but I'm a bow hunter through and through, die hard. I live to bow hunt, especially elk, and I think you're gonna have better success in the long run and shoot tighter groups with a surprise release. You can do it with a handheld, you can do it with an index, you can do it with attention activated. Regardless of the release aid, you can talk yourself through consciously, not subconsciously, but you can defy your subconscious, stay in the moment and get a cleaner break. Now this video is just to get you guys excited and give you some resources to take a peek. Number one, 40 yards and in for the first 10, 15 years of my archery. If it was an animal, there's a good chance I was gonna punch the trigger and I was gonna get away with it. But what I started noticing was the, all the animals that I either missed, maybe even wounded, but mainly missed, all the depression that comes from working so hard for that one shot opportunity, anything beyond 40, sometimes would almost be a 50-50 just because the anxiety of I need to get rid of this arrow and the fact that I could get rid of the arrow really fast really expanded my groups in practice and in the field. So the bottom line is once I finally took a lesson from Josh Jones on just basic mechanics and form, by the way, still do to this day, get refreshers. Then I had Joel Turner come over to my house. Maybe you saw that video and live coach me up on how and how the mind works and how you should be in control and staying present and having a very well scripted shot process. In your chest, good, hooked into that and then just, just lengthen, but the release stays in place in space. Mm -hmm. But you're just stretching your hand on it. This is a fixed position, right? but this is dynamic. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that clicks with yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Feel that? Yep. Is that different than your normal shot? Yes. Okay. Feel that increase? Yeah. It's more intense. It's more intense concentration when you're looking at it too, because you're actually putting your subconscious into it too. Definitely. But you really get to understand what's happening. 
And now I actually feel even more confident. My effective archery range has expanded. It's still archery. I still wanna get as close as possible, but my groups have really shrunk up and I can really work through some of the things that easily get overlooked on other people's archery sessions. I'm more convinced about shooting every arrow in a controlled manner versus just getting three dozen arrows loose downrange. It's about every arrow that leaves my bow and every shot I take is an opportunity to practice my control and my determination. We wanted to highlight a couple clips of some of the elk shape camps, some of the little tidbits Joel Turner's done. We've had him on this channel before, but we just believe in his system as well as, and maybe he didn't invent all this stuff, but he has packaged it nicely to where we want to help you accelerate your archery game. We don't want you to squander any opportunities in the field. I want you to be patient. I want you to wait for that shot to develop. And I don't want you to get rid of that arrow. I want you to stay present, stay in the moment, regardless of your release aid and execute a perfect controlled shot. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> I didn't do that. No. <laughs> that was awesome. I was just along for the ride. And that yeah. was quite a ride there, pal. Yeah. So what I was thinking was pull, 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 pull. <laughs> and then pull. what happened? It didn't go off. So I made it go off. It didn't go off. So what specifically, what thought specifically came into your head? Was it, why isn't this going on? Yeah. This is weird. This guy's touching my finger. Whatever. No, it was, it was, it's not going off. It should be going off. This should be going off. Right. And so, so finally I just made it go so off. So we got to listen very right. specifically to Sam's answer on that. Cause it's going to play a big part in our instruction today. So he's walking himself through a shot and it didn't go off when he wanted it to. So the, your mind left it. Yes, it did. And as soon as it left it, you punched the crap out of that I one. Did. You actually collapsed and punched it all at the same time. Bunch, a whole bunch of link motor programs. It's hard to do. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> impressive, bro. Did everybody shoot? This is a wise choice. This is a three finger. This is a thumb barrel. What I do to activate this release is I hook over, I set the barrel in a specific spot where I make contact skin to skin. And once I'm in that anchored position that I can duplicate easily, I can pull and open my hand up, relax, and it will break. What I don't do is barely put my thumb on this trigger and when it's time and that pins where I want it, I don't rattlesnake it. Now there's times where you can and will punch this on purpose. I did it weeks ago on an eight yard bear shot. I purposely said, squeeze it, get rid of it. And I made the, I made the release go off, but the shot prior to that was a perfect keep pulling, keep pulling break and it's really bolstered my confidence in the field. And confidence is like equity. It goes up over time as you continue to put in the work. Now, Joel does a great job of teaching. Indexes can be shot very controlled. And the best way to do that is to put that in the second knuckle, in my opinion, or somewhere between the first and second knuckle, get that in a fixed position, adjust the strap so that it's not too long, too short, hook in, make contact, get on that trigger, and then work through pulling your hand through the strap. And you will get a real consistent break. And after the break, it'll just be dangling. And that's when you know you're starting to utilize a controlled shot process. Now, if you don't know a script, if you don't know the blueprint, if you don't know the science behind a controlled mind, that's where you're gonna go take Joel Turner's course. Y'all know the discount code ELKSHAPE. There's a limited amount of spots available. It takes 40 bucks off the course. Could quite possibly change your life. Guys, in closing, this is a journey. We love showing you our journey and the evolution. I can't wait to do another one of these videos, Lord willing, in 20 years and talking about what I was doing 20 years ago that I don't do anymore. It's an evolution, it's a process. I can tell you right now, when I first met Tim, he was shakier than a leaf and the way he shot his handheld, specifically a hinge, was half-assed backwards. And the huge strides he's made just in the last three years, I mean, he's smashed the learning curve. He's taking down animals. He's no longer using an index. He doesn't even use it. He hunts with the hinge and he shoots it proper. It's so exciting to see. And there's days at the practice range where we can't touch him. I couldn't have said that three years ago. Jake met him three years ago. 
This is the release he used over and over and over. He was a trigger slapper, trigger puncher. Now he's using a handheld and he's getting cleaner breaks and he's been working with MFJJ. He's worked with Joel Turner, some of these shared resources and it's elevated his game. What we're trying to convey is that we all are here to work better. What are you working on? Comment below. Let us know the biggest obstacle in front of your archery game that you're trying to overcome. But we can't wait to keep bringing you better, awesome archery tips. Make sure you're subbed. We appreciate your support. Catch you on the next one. Because autopilot's coming like a freight train. When that big bull is standing in front of you and you're huffing and puffing, all those same things happen to you, you are gonna try to shoot that thing when any pin gets on that sucker, right? You have to make yourself conscious. That is done through decisions. Here I go. How many of you said, here I go, and you're shooting out here? I hope so. That is, those are the most important three words you could ever say to yourself in a high stress shooting event. Another question was raised, when do we let down? When do we let down? On a critter, I would suggest never, right? But if you don't let down, you have to be able to reset because the question was, what do I do when it's just not moving? Well, if you don't feel it moving, it ain't moving, right? Your mind has left it. So you have to bring your conscious mind back and you do that with here I go. So if you find yourself at full draw and you're thinking, God, when's this thing going to go off? Or man, that's a seven by seven, right? Your mind is not where it needs to be. You have to reach into the mess that is now